a long time coming. I have been so excited to finally be able to speak some of these truths. Um, and so this is the first ever long-term usage study that we have done. So back in 2018, we took about two dozen people, a little bit more, and these people all committed to wearing the tech every day. Okay, and so that was the main commitment is if we're gonna map you and follow you, we want you to make sure that you wear this every single day. Not everybody wore it every night, I will say, because people were still getting used to the idea of wearing socks at night and we didn't always have the patches. And so um, it wasn't a necessity to have to wear it at night, but definitely every day while you're awake, you're wearing it. And then also the interim time in between maps had to be a minimum of eight months. So nothing shorter than eight months. So some of these people, the study only lasted uh, two years. Other people, it took three years to get those, th to get the final maps in, okay? So with that, the, inter the initial map was in 2018 for everybody. The second map, as I mentioned, eight months later, that might've been the end of 18 or sometime in 2019. And then the final map was 2020, okay? So we are truly seeing a good comparison. And also I'm gonna let you know that all of these maps are baseline maps with no HPT technology on them, okay? And so this is just raw coming in. And then you wear the tech for over eight months, you come in raw again, do I see an improvement? Does the tech only last that day as it's on you? Or does it have any type of long-term effect because I'm wearing it over time and it's helping my own body grow neuroplasticity in there, reprogram things and allow them to function the way that they're supposed to function. Gosh, I feel like Dr. Sean, like all the hair in my body is standing up. I'm just so excited about the data, right? So with that, we have three maps. You're gonna see three images on every screen moving forward. The left image is 2018, the right image is 2020, the middle image was somewhere in between eight months intervals in between every, everything, right? We're all on the same track. Okay, so here we go. This first one, I'm also gonna describe the key of colors. We're not gonna talk about the colors so much moving forward as, uh, as you should understand it. So gray is healthy and normal. And then yellow means that the tissue in that area is firing two times too fast. And then red means four times too fast. So that's the worst. So the other side of that equation is the blues. Light blue means it's two times too slow and dark blue means it's four times too slow. So your ability to shift that uh, neurology higher or lower, it's what keeps us healthy. Okay, and so when we see the image on the left here, that cortex is very busy. It's mostly yellow and kind of orangish. So I'd say two to three times faster than normal. Now, some people think, well, hey, is it more better? Well, no, and more is not necessarily better. Okay, that's bombarding those signals so fast that it's confusing it. Remember being in a crowded room and you're trying to talk to somebody and they're giving you important information, but there's so many people yelling around you, you're missing words and it becomes stressful, okay? That's brain on fire, okay? That's very active yellow and red brain. Now we see in, in the course of the first eight months or so, maybe less orange and more yellowish. So all that tells me is their neurology was working on the deeper stuff first because it was far more important. But then you can see after the second year, hey, it caught up and it cleared it completely, which is awesome. And then we see another scenario, a little bit worse, more red, all red initially. Half the brain cleared up, and then by the end, 90% of it was clear. We see another example, mostly orange and red. Half of it cleared up, the rest is yellow, and then just a little bit of yellow remnants on the top. And then for somebody that was pretty healthy to begin with, just a little bit of yellow in the back of the brain, it got a little bit more yellowish, and then a little less and more gray, right? So the less color you see, the healthier the neurology is. So we're seeing a trend that the longer you wear it, the better your cortex. And remember the cortex, the gray that you've been seeing in these images, this is your, your ability to think and do things. It's all your thoughts and it's all your motion and movement and everything that you tell your body to do. Now those tissues are only processing about 2000 bits of data per second. 
which sounds like a lot of data for me to be thinking about per second. Um, but what we're about to peel away is the cortex and look inside the brain. And this is processing over 400 million bits of data per second. So far more weight. So with that, let's talk about information flow. Information flow is your ability just to send information from one part of your brain to the other. Do not stop it, go. Do not collect $200. Just get it there straight, straight away. Now, that ability when it's blue concerns us more because there's a lag time. It's just taking too long to get it there. When information flow is blue, usually it's, it's a damage or it's an elderly person that is burned out, okay? Um, but in this scenario, we can see the first year, Vox just woke that all up. We're gonna see a trend in all the images following your own neurology is always going to go for the dark blue first. It's always going to wake up the things that are, are most threatening you and most compromising your neurology and correct that first. It's easy to calm down reds and yellows. So you can always do that at any time. The blues, it's like time is ticking. You only have so much time before it stops firing and then it's too late, right? So we can see here the amount of lines that you're seeing, the fewer the lines, the healthier their neurology. So the goal would be to start seeing through the forest. So that is definitely get rid of the blue first and then it thins the lines and makes it easier to see through. Here's another example, dense red and blue. And as a physician, that's just concerning to me because it's unpredictable behavior in their neurology. We can clearly see a lot of the red is gone and it's getting easier to see through. And then after the last map, 50% or 60% of the neurology is back online, which is wonderful. Here's somebody that's a little bit healthier, just yellows, no reds and dark blues in there. But again, we see the forest get thinner and thinner. The fewer the lines, the better functioning your neurology is. The next thing is coherence. So information just sends information from A to B. Coherence needs to share it through everybody in the network. So you have over 130 different specific regions of tissue in your, in your brain that are called Broadman areas. And groups of them get together to form a network because each one of those areas has a very specific function to do. And a lot of them need to share that function with a lot of different networks. And so coherence is when you're dumped on information do I comprehend it immediately? Can I turn around and teach it to somebody? Or is it confusing initially? And I need to think about that to work it through in my brain to process it. Here we see some very poor coherence on the left. We see the dark blue lines going away and then many more lines disappearing. The back corner of uh, left bottom corner of the image is the cerebellum. That's all motor function in the brain. We see that go from dark blue to light blue to disappearing, right? So all their ability to comprehend their body's position in time and space and movement got extremely better over time. Here we see another one, a lot more dark blue, front of the brain and the back of the brain. Halfway through, the front of the brain clears up considerably, a lot fewer lines and more light blue. Another year in, it's like that whole frontal half, it looks awesome, okay? There's just a few lines left in there. So again, comprehension is improving. This is that initial comprehension. After the initial comprehension improves, then we look at something called lagged coherence. Lagged is your ability to focus on something over an extended period of time and have it become easier. It should, anything you put your attention into should get easier the longer you're focusing on it. Some people, it just gets more confusing. So we see here, a lot of dark blue turning to light blue in the back and then eventually um, mostly clear. Somebody not as severe, again, 50% better than another 50% or more better, down to just a few lines left in their lag coherence. Another example, front is all dark blue. Front clears up, the rest clears up. The longer you wear the tech, the more beautiful your neurology starts firing and functioning and, and the more better your experience in your life is because your, your neurology is more responsive, right? Now, executive functioning network. This is probably one of the most important networks you have because it's your working memory, mental flexibility, self-control. 
This is the, the network of our civilization and socialization skills to be able to interact with people and not lose my control and say the wrong thing and, and be able to remember the things that I want to say when I want to say it. This network is developed when you're three to five years old. If you were played with and engaged with and loved on during that time, most likely those skills became easy in your life. But if you weren't during that time, it's a missing critical piece of, of your development. And so we can absolutely help this area, help it come back online, help it fire better so that you can be in the moment and thrive and, and function the way that you need to function when you're in, around somebody else and you need to talk and engage with that person. We see some significant changes, the trend in almost everybody in the study, their cognitive function and that executive functioning network gets cleaner and cleaner. Remember, the fewer the lines, the healthier your neurology. The next one is the default mode. We mentioned this earlier when we were doing questions about sleep, but the default mode regulates light sleep. So that's half your night. It's regulating emotions and memories and helping you make sure everything's above board in your life. The things that you said are true and the things that you're doing are, are, are right. Okay, all of that happens in that default mode. It's also during the day, if there's a bunch of lines there, you're distracted. So this is a very good trend also that we're seeing common amongst everybody in the study is that default mode gets nicer and cleaner and fewer, fewer lines, which means better functioning neurology. The limbic system, it's like the gear shifter in your car. It, it's the stress or anxiety or depression of your body, not your head and your brain and your thoughts. Okay, thoughts are one thing, how your body feels is limbic. And so think of being in a car that's a manual shift car. If I'm physically going 50 miles an hour, that gear shifter should be in around fifth gear. So there's the right amount of stress on the engine. If I drop it into second, I'm burning the engine out, that's anxiety. If I slow the car down to 20 miles an hour, and I'm still in fifth gear, I stall the car, that's depression. So your internal ability to shift that arousal state, another fabulous trend that we're seeing through people. So when you see a bunch of lines here, it means one of two things. In the red scenario, that's overstimulated. So when something exciting happens, your body gets excited with it, and then I can't turn it off. And that excitement turns to anxiety and stress and tension, and, and now I'm over, overwound up, okay? And I can't let it go or something exciting happens and I don't get excited because I don't believe it's gonna happen and I just can't bring myself to be let down again. And so I'm just not gonna let the engine move in that direction, okay? And so either way, it's that adapting of your arousal state to the appropriate arousal state of whatever's going on around you in your environment. So we see significant changes on people. And again, the red and the blue in the same, ooh, that's kind of scary. That's very unpredictable um, to see such deep lines get thinner and then eventually become unremarkable is awesome. And these people feel the difference. They know that, oh my gosh, I don't stress out at all like I used to. And I feel much happier all the time. Working memory, how many times you're running upstairs to remember what was I coming up here for? Oh my gosh, I forgot, you know, or, or saying you're gonna do something and completely forgetting to do it, not even thinking about it. That's your working memory network. The longer you wear the tech, the better the networks that are the most concerned for you get, right? So past the brainstem, I can't predict where it's gonna go. There's a few, few here that we're showing you that seem to be a trend amongst everybody, but each person in that study also had some, other networks that were way out of balance for them that got better because remember opening with the front door the neurology always goes to the part that you need the most right so working memory is one that seems to be a, a good um, common thing amongst everybody and also the pain network we know that this helps people with pain departmentalize it turn it off have a better pain threshold and so we should see everybody getting fewer and fewer lines the longer they wear this, which means that they can control the pain better. They can departmentalize it better. Then we look at our attention and our focus network, okay? And so a lot of people have ADD, ADHD, and inattention. If the left image shows a bunch of lines there, you have one of the three. And so we see over time, everybody's getting better. Now we know we can put an e-smarter sleeve on and turn this one around instantly in 20 minutes. To get it to stay, we have to wear the sleeve for maybe a few months. I don't know how long it would stay. We haven't done the study on the sleeves, but 
it's pretty cool to see that once we open the front door, a lot of people's biggest problem is their ability to pay attention and focus. And so that's where all that extra HPT goes. We see it here. We see it in another scenario, which this person had pretty advanced ADD, um, and they were able to, to beat it finally after their whole life of dealing with it. Same thing with this person as well, too. So we see a lot of that, and that tends to be an easier network uh, for you to get back online, because I think you want to be able to control it and idle it down at will and turn it on at will, too, when I need to. Um, so that's that network. And then attention network ventral is your ability to shift your attention when an unexpected event happens. And are you okay with that? Can you roll with it? Or do you get upset and dwell on it? So we see a good common denominator here too, tendency where things get clearer and clearer. And so the biggest thing that I want to leave everybody with, with this presentation is that you're never going to find anything else that you can do that's this inexpensive and this simple is putting on a pair of socks that's going to help your entire brain come back online over time. This is an example of looking at over 200 networks at the same time, all overlapping each other. It's very rare that you could do any one thing in your life other than neurofeedback training to ever impact this image and to see the changes. And what we see with everybody is like I mentioned before, your own neurology goes after the blue parts first and deals with them, and then it calms down the rest of the brain. So we see this back whole corner here is blue, and the other side is a lot of dark red. In the middle image, the blues and the reds are pretty much gone, and we can see through the trees, in essence, through the And doing for you. Look at this the next scenario. A person not quite as bad as the previous one, but again, we're seeing the lines clear out of the house, right? We're seeing the brain come back online in ways that are so phenomenal. Here's another one. The blue disappears first, and then the whole left half of the brain, and this well, right half of the picture, but it's the person's left half of the brain, remarkably comes online. That is something that we just don't see ever. And to have something that can do that on literally every single person that puts this on and keeps it on their body, imagine the, the jumpstart each and every one of you have five years from now saying, oh, yeah, I learned about that five years ago. Look at my brain now. There's no lines left. And look at my life now and how, how everything's just fitting into place and how, how much happier I've been and how I don't feel pain and all these little things that we just take for granted. It's doing so much for, the, for you that you can't even comprehend what it's literally doing. You're only aware of the gray matter, which remember, you know, that's just 2000 bits of data per second and it's what you're consciously aware of. The chemistry in your body, 65 quadrillion chemical reactions every second. In the dark even, how awesome is that? And how wonderfully and fearfully are we made? And to find something that can tap into our neurology reprogram it, tune it back in and allow us to be more efficient in every aspect of our life and what we're doing. Oh my goodness, you can't put a price on that. Oh yeah, you can, less than $2 a day. How about that for you? So all that considering, thank you for uh, letting me share that quick little presentation. As I mentioned, I've been working on that for a while, following a lot of people, doing a lot of brain maps just to prove what I already knew from the first brain map that I saw. They can do that much change and hold that change as long as it's on my feet. That's neurofeedback, ladies and gentlemen. That's growing new tissue in your brain. And this is a very unique product because I've never seen anything else that can do it on a consistent basis over time, as long as it's touching our body. You will never adapt to it. You will never outperform it. It's always gonna be your coach, your internal coach. that's always keeping you pushing the limits and going for the best experience of your neurology that you can possibly have on this planet.